I told you we had this wonderful collection of Viennese uh, miniature furniture or accessory pieces in our auction and I wanted to show you one example because it ties into the next pieces I'm showing you. This is a wonderful grand piano. These are all bronze frames finished with a rich gilt finish and then having the enamel, uh, enameled porcelain hand-painted scenes on them all done in the courtly manner of the 18th century. And for my way of judging the seams, I always look at the number of people, the number of animals, and it tells you. In this particular case of the piano, and before I start showing you, let me show you the real surprise. All right, and now I'm going to lift the lid. hidden treasure chest inside, and we have the wonderful keyboard cover, but wait, there's more. You lift the keyboard cover to reveal the keys and another scene painted on the top of the keyboard and this beautiful gilt finish. It's an extraordinary work. The quality of the sound is just extraordinary. It even has the little hinge bar to hold up the lid. And now staying with the piano theme, I wanted to show you two other wonderful examples of French automatons of elegant ladies or children standing at the piano. It's a popular theme of the French automaton makers, and particularly Vichy, in this case, who produced both of these. Um, this, the first one we have is done in the earlier period, about 1875, and you can tell it was a luxury piece, not only from the quality of the doll and her costuming and her gorgeous wig, but from the quality of the piano itself, which is wonderful rosewood and ebony finish on it with the ormolu candelabra with the bone covered keys the ormolu vase with flowers at the top and listen to the quality of the music very very fine she's nodding her head she'll move her fingers across the keys and what I always wonder why more doll collectors don't take into consideration. This is a grand piece to put in your presentation. If you collect two or three other French fashions and you have this lady sitting at the piano, you not only have a doll, but you have the piece of furniture and you build an entire environment around it of the dolls examining the lady doll seated at the piano. Obviously a luxury piece by Vichy. A little bit later, in the late 1880s, Vichy continued to um, create his piano people. In this case, a little girl. Entirely different type of little airy sort of music, but this concept remains the same. She's, in this case, standing at the piano, not sitting on a stool, and her hands are plunking up and down on the keys. She has a decorative ormolu piece, uh, porcelain pieces and the brass candelabra. And there's one more surprise. Watch this. The lid lifts up and inside is a container because this was originally presented in a Paris confiserie as a very luxury bone bone or candy box. How would you like to get a box of candy with this? Thank you. 
In the 1890s, a wonderful German firm called Zinner and Sohn, Zinner and Sons, um, produced a series of vignettes that were mechanical and musical as well, and they were all hand wind. Un unlike the French, that you wound, had a key and you wound it and you stepped back, these, you st as a child, you would stand in front of it and, and have a little kind of control or involvement in the actual mechanism of the piece. I love Zinner and Zone pieces, and you know, even if you, don't ha you didn't have the mechanism and the music, I love them for the scenes that they have. I always try to imagine what was going on here. Um, was it a dance party? Was it children taking dancing lessons? Um, very, very complicated kind of activity going on. And look, count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little all bisque dolls, all in their little original factory costumes and the dance hall with the ormolu framed um, prints on the wall and the candelabra and the big dancing mirror in the back so they could see if they were doing well. What you, I'm going to tip it a little bit so you can see in the middle of the room, is a cutout circular panel, which is the actual dance floor. And what's great about this, when you turn the handle, not only does music play, but the dance floor revolves. And get this, the little fellow with the violin is strumming his violin, and she's waving her hands in time to the music. And the three pairs of children, the three couples, each pivot individually on the dance floor, which is also revolving. So lots of little complicated movings going on. And you know what, again, even if you weren't playing with it, just having that scene um, in the midst of your doll display is absolutely wonderful. A very luxury piece at the time and so beautifully preserved. Going back to the French automaton makers, um, this was a, a very, very famous piece that was done of a child sitting on a bench. And the one that the rendition that is more commonly known is the one um, about the little boy with the little dunce cap ears, and he's holding his basket of flowers, and he has that highly characterized crying kind of face. Um, the same theme was used by the company in producing this wonderful rendition, and clearly always meant to be the girl because they had Leonard on her basket, Jean, J-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, and the boy had been John, J-E-A-N. At any rate, she has a more typically found little bisque head, and her basket is full of toys. She's holding a book, she's holding two dolls, and she is so charming, a charming picture of a childhood, and watch. She wants to proudly show off all of her dolls and toys in the book she's reading. Her little foot is tapping. You know, I always love novelty, novelty pieces and things that just I showed, I don't know, just a, a joie de vivre that a toy and doll makers had at the time. And we have there this wonderful bone-handled coronet um, that looked like people would carry this to a party. But watch what happens. You push the handle up, and there's a crying-faced child. And now, push the handle up, and there's the laughing child. So first of all, you don't even realize that there's anything inside this coronet. You think they're just carrying a party favor. But there are um, two different faces inside. And when you close it, the top of his hat is tufted so it looks like the cover of the coronet. 
Now, I just try to imagine how this was used. Was this like at a party, at a dance, and some guy comes up and asks you to dance, and you don't like him? Put that head up. Then the next guy comes up, the one you barely had your eye on, and he asks you to dance, and you smile and say, yes, I'll have this dance. I don't know. I just imagine things like that. It probably wasn't. In the meantime, you have the scene at the bottom, which is kind of counter, counter all of this because it is a woman who's trying to ward herself off from a dog who's biting her skirt. And she's using her umbrella to say, get away, get away. And the basket of eggs she has in her hand, the eggs are falling out of the basket. Wonderful imaginative kind of scenes and environments and all put together by French people who just have this sense of making these luxurious pieces. So rare to find them. I put this little doll here to show you because she's part of the category of doll collecting that I think is, makes the fine art dolls more affordable to newer collectors. And these are the Sonnenberg dolls that were being made in Sonnenberg regions in the early 1880s in order to compete with their very luxurious and much more expensive uh, French dolls of the period. Um, I know a collector once who wrote an article, she called them the great pretenders, and I always thought that summed it up perfectly. They were the great pretenders because they actual, were actual, I don't know if they actually used the molds themselves, but it's quite conceivable they did because many of them actually had offices in Paris, and when a new creation came out by a French doll maker, they would immediately buy samples of it and send it back to the factory in Sonnenberg. This beautiful little girl, and again, she's like an in-the-palm-of-your-hand doll, that wonderful, tiny, desirable size, and she looks exactly like Leon Casimir Bruce doll known as the Circle Dot, with that very, very distinctive, very chubby cheeks and the slightly open mouth, um, and looks exactly like it, and it's known by collectors as the Brew Lookalike in this wonderful uh, dress with broderie and glaze, the beautiful bonnet. I turned it around before. I'm going to turn it again so you can see it. She's totally original, and even her little aqua silk shoes with the pom-poms. When they copied the French, they were going full tilt. Beautiful doll. Wonderful opportunity. And then I just put this lady in because you can see the, the categories that I like are widespread. And this is a beautiful early doll by Simon and Halbig. So many rare features about this wonderful doll. The magenta ribbon in her hair, and I'll turn it around in a minute and you'll be able to see the back of the hair. But look at the this town, look how tiny she is. She's the size of my thumb. But look at the painting on her face. It's absolutely extraordinary. This is a true work of art. Swivel head as well. She has her original body. And this is a curious piece because her bisque arms that go to above the elbows are really kind of, mm, they're pretty strong looking. And when we lift up her dress, you can see her wonderful original ankle boots. And let me show you the back of her hair. The long ringlet curls coming down. It's an exceptional example.